Hello and welcome to this explainer on measuring inequality with a specific emphasis on the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient. It's helpful to keep in mind what are good principles for, measure, for a measure of inequality. So any measure that satisfies these four measurement principles uh, is able to, we call this a, a good measure of uh, inequality in a, in, a, in a population. First of all, uh, a measure should be anonymous. So it shouldn't matter on whether you're looking at uh, whether John has more income or Pete. Um, second, it shouldn't matter how large the population is. So if you double the population, the measure of inequality should not change. Similarly, the absolute levels of, uh, of income or whatever measure you're looking at should be irrelevant. So if, if, you, uh, if prices were to double in an economy, that alone should not uh, influence inequality. And um, the fourth one is the, the so-called Dalton principle, uh, the Dalton transfer principle. And the idea here is that if you move money from a rich person to a poor person, your measure of inequality should decrease. Uh, you're making a progressive transfer, you're equalizing the income distribution. So uh, you are, if, if you have a good measure of inequality, um, this, this should pick up such a decrease in, in, uh, in the income of this, uh, a narrowing of the income distribution. Now, one way to visualize uh, income distribution is through the Lorentz curve. And here it's important to note the axes. So on the horizontal axis, we have the cum cumulative population share. And on the vertical axis, we have the cumulative income share. So what does that mean? Um, it means that if we have two, uh, two groups in the population, A and B, um, let's say that group A, uh, all with the same income, uh, makes up 20% of the population and earns about 7% of, uh, of the income. Um, group B, uh, is, uh, well, in this very simple one, would make up uh, the rest of the, would make up much of the rest of the population and uh, earn, a, uh, an, earn a further part of income. Now, in this case, now, crucially for the Lorentz curve, income groups are ranked by their average income. So, um, so group A with 20% of the population has only about 7% of the, of the income. Uh, in other words, its, uh, its, its income is below that of the average person in this, uh, in this economy. Um, and by ranking them in this way, you ensure that the Lorentz curve is always below the 45 degree line because uh, because you're always uh, starting from the lowest earning uh, group of the population. Now, if you then connect all the points uh, for each uh, represented by each income group, you get a you get the Lorentz curve. Uh, so in this case, there are four different uh, income groups. Group A shown here. Here's another income group. Uh, Here's the third one and the fourth one uh, that gets you to 100% of the, the, the population and 100% of the income share. Uh, so the, the difference between the third and the fourth group, uh, so it's, it's uh, less than 20% of the population and about 30% of the income. So this is clearly the richest group in this economy. Now this Lorentz curve is quite useful for, for looking at the income distribution uh, within an economy, because if we know uh, the Lorentz curve at two points in time, so for instance, uh, shown here, that tells us something about inequality. Um, so in this, uh, as drawn here, um, curve L1 is uh, higher at all points 
than curve L2. So that means uh, yeah, if, we, if we focused on the lowest income group over here, um, it's uh, under L1, it has a higher income share uh, while we, we have the same population share. In other words, this group, uh, the only way to get from L2 to L1 is through progressive Dalton transfers. You're moving money from richer people to poorer people. And likewise, at the top of the distribution, um, and you see that the, the richest group uh, on, with L2 had an income share of uh, 40%, uh, but it's, uh, in, under L1, it's only about 30%. So in other words, uh, L1 is, uh, less, is less unequal, inequality is lower with, uh, under L1 than L2. You can also have a situation as drawn here where the Lorentz curves cross. At this point, you cannot make a statement whether one is more unequal than the other. Why is that? Well, you cannot use a Dalton transfer, uh, progressive or regressive, to move from one distribution to the other. And so in this case, the, um, the lower income groups are, richer, are, are poorer, are richer under L2 than L1, but the richest uh, are also uh, richer than before. So um, you are, uh, you're, there is no unambiguous comparison of, of inequality. Of course, you can compute all the measures of inequality you want, and that gives you an answer. And in one case, it will be higher or lower, but crucially because these Lorentz curves cross, we cannot have some, some measures will show that L1 is higher than L2 and vice versa. So that's why the, the Lorentz curve is a very powerful instrument for talking about and thinking about inequality. Um, so now the other part of the reason why the Lorentz curve is important is because it's closely related to the Gini coefficient. And uh, you may encounter the Gini coefficient when uh, reading about inequality. And a important uh, feature here is that the Gini coefficient is equal to the area between the Lorentz curve and the 45 degree line. So the area uh, that's uh, shaded in gray here. Now, how do we get that? Um, for that, we use the following equation, uh, and this uh, can be daunting. Um, and uh, the, the key issue here is the income differences between all the different groups. That's the important first important bit. Um, the, the second important bit are the uh, group sizes denoted by N, so income Y um, group size N. Uh, and we were always comparing group, one group to another. So then the daunting part is, of course, the double summation. Um, you're summing over all, all groups J, J and all groups K. Um, so this is less daunting uh, than it looks like, as we'll show in a minute. Before that, there's a scaling factor. So we scale by the... the, the and uh, by two times n squared, so n is the total population, so the sum over all nj's, and mu is the average income. And that gives you the Gini coefficient. Now to visualize this, I've uh, drawn a table for four income groups that are shown in the, in the, in the, in the Lorentz curve to the left. Um, so in a way, what, we're, what we do when computing a Gini coefficient is filling in this table. Right? So you can easily do that by, by looking at each of, the, uh, or each of the income comparisons. Note too that we're looking here at the absolute income difference here between group one and itself, between group one and group two, between group one and group three, and between group one and group four. Um, so computing the Gini coefficient is uh, primarily filling in this table and then uh, working your way through the uh, equation at the top. 
uh, but we can simplify this uh, calculation quite a bit by noting two features here. First, the difference between uh, each income group and itself is zero. So all the diagonals are zero. And secondly, because the uh, because we're looking at the absolute income difference, each diagonal piece is, is the same, each off diagonal piece is the same as uh, the one uh, mirrored to that. Uh, so if we go to the full table, uh, Y1 minus Y2, absolute value is the same as Y2 minus Y1. So that simplifies things quite a bit. So rather than having to compute a four by four uh, set of computations, you're left with only six income differences in this case of four income groups. Now, let's run through a numerical example to clarify this even more. Um, so these are the four income groups um, that I showed before. Each group has a size, so that's the N. Based on these Ns, you can compute a the cumulative population shares. So those are the ones shown in the in the table before, in the in the figure before. Each group has an average income, so where each person in that group has this income level, and multiplying the size of the group by the average income uh, will give you total income. Given total income, we can uh, compute the cumulative income share, and that gives you the so uh, these are the values that the cumulative population share and cumulative income share are uh, plotted in this Lorentz curve. Um, but what you need for the Gini coefficient calculations are uh, first the size of the group and second their average income. So given these two, uh, given the average incomes, we can plug in uh, plug them into the table we, uh, we drew up before. So comparing income of uh, group one to group two means computing, uh, means computing uh, 0.35 minus 0.7. And working your way through, you get six income differences uh, you need Plugging that into the equation, so we have between group one and group two, group one and group three, group one and group four, group two and group three, group three and two and group four, and group three and group four. Multiply each income comparison by the size of that group, um, size of the two groups. Uh, so group one is size 20 group, uh, Sorry, group one, uh, group, group one is uh, size uh, 20, group two is size 30, so 20 times 30 times the income difference. Group one and group three is 20 and 35 and so on. Um, now the average income was one, so that's mu is equal to one in this, in the normalization. Total population of 100, so we need to divide by one over 100 squared. Uh, and that gives us the Gini coefficient uh, 0 0.29. Um, just to be clear, um, and when moving to the, uh, from the, uh, the full uh, equation to the, uh, to the modified, to the simplified one, we lost, uh, we dropped the, the two in the, in the numerator here because we reduce the number of comparisons. Uh, so we're not, uh, in the original one, uh, you would be comparing all, uh, computing the full uh, set of differences. So between two and one and between one and two. Um, since we're only doing this once, we no longer need to divide by two times n squared times mu. So it's only n squared times mu. So I hope that uh, this gives you uh, enough of an, uh, of an indication of, first of all, what the Lorentz curve measures and why it's important. Secondly, the relationship to the Gini coefficient. And third, how you can actually compute a Gini coefficient given information about 
uh, income and size of different groups in the population. Thank you.